Good morning. Good morning. Let us hear the voice of John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make the paths straight for him. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God. Uh, Bible study will begin, uh, begin again on Tuesday, so we'll see you on Tuesday evening on Zoom, and I'll send the link out about 6.15. If there are no other announcements, then let's turn in our bulletin to our responsive call to worship. On this second Sunday of Advent, we continue to prepare to celebrate the birth, just wait, the birth of Christ and await his return in glory. We light a candle each week with and to remind us that Jesus brings light into the dark places of the world and our lives. Each candle reminds us to wait, first in hope and now in peace, for Christ to come. Advent calls us to claim anew Jesus, just as I He's not enough, and lives through faith. We relight the candle of hope to proclaim that God's light has come and will come again to bring hope to the world. We light the candle of peace to proclaim that God's promises were fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Let us wait in hope and peace for the fulfillment of God's promises. May the peace of Christ fill us today and always. Let us turn in our bulletin to come the long expected Jesus. Anna, would you get a couple of bulletins for, because I don't think that they got bulletins in the back row here. If you're able, let us stand.
Forgive us, Lord, when we put our time and energy into the material preparations for Christmas, rather than claiming the lasting peace which Christ offers. Forgive us, O oh God, when we fail to make smooth the rough places in people's lives to prepare the way for Jesus to return. Renew us with your peace, Lord, so that we might prepare the way for the celebration of our Savior's birth and be ready for his return. Hear us now as we lift our personal confessions in silence. People of God, God forgave the iniquity of his people and covered all their sins. Surely your salvation is near to those who fear the Lord, that God's glory may dwell in our land. Thanks be to God, who forgives the sin of all who put their faith in Christ Jesus. Let us join our voices in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Of the field. 
The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arm rules for him. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. From the second letter of Peter, the third chapter beginning at verse eight. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. And from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waists, waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of God's holy word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our salvation. Amen. How do we live at peace with God? Peter wrote his second letter to encourage watchful waiting in the light of the coming of the day of the Lord, Jesus' certain return. Some Christians thought that because Jesus had not yet come back, he would not come at all. Peter maintained they were not viewing things from God's perspective. 
Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Peter was quoting Moses' words in Psalm 90. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. A watch was a four-hour guard shift. God does not view or experience time the way we do, because God is eternal. God is not bound by time as we are. Therefore, a thousand years are like a day to God. First century Roman philosopher Seneca said, we are always complaining that our days are few, yet acting as though there would be no end. Seneca also said, it's not that we have little time, but more that we waste a good deal of it. How do we waste time? In 1997, on average, Americans spent 54 minutes per week on religious activities, but spent 15 hours a week watching television. By 2020, the average time people watched television went up to 21 hours a week, three hours each day. I suspect even in the past three years, that has increased if you think of television as screen time, because people watch television anywhere now. This Advent season, let us not waste time. First. We live at peace with God when we make time to know and love and serve and obey God. For then we will be able to trust God and live at peace with God. Peter warned that in the last days people would doubt God because he was slow, tardy, delaying, his promise that Jesus would return. Peter said, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. God is patient with you and me, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The purposes of God often develop slowly because his grand designs are never hurried. The great New England preacher, Phillips Brooks, who wrote the, the Christmas Carol, A Little Town of Bethlehem, was noted for his poise and quiet manner. At times, however, even he endured moments of frustration and exasperation. One day, a friend saw him feverishly pacing the floor, back and forth, What's the trouble, my friend? He asked. Brooks responded, The trouble is that I'm in a hurry, but God isn't. We've all felt that same way, haven't we? God is not slow. God is patient, meaning forbearing. The prolonged restraint of anger or agitation this characteristic appears in God and in those united with Jesus Christ, who live in Christ. Second, we live at peace with God when we accept God's patience with and in our lives. When we allow God's patience, one of the nine fruit of the Spirit, to develop in us. My psychology 101 professor many, many years ago quoted this proverb a lot, so much so in one semester that I still remember it. Patience, I've told you this before, patience is a virtue. Cultivate it if you can. Seldom found in women, never found in man. <laughs> It was a man who was the professor. 
This Advent season, let us cultivate patience with God, with others, and with ourselves. For then we will live at peace with God. Jesus is coming again. Will we be ready for his return, or will he catch us unprepared? God has delayed the return of Jesus for more than 2,000 years, but he will not delay his second coming forever. Why the delay? Because God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. A young lady, lady busied herself getting ready for a blind date. The young man had planned dinner at an exclusive downtown restaurant with live music and dancing. Wanting to make a good first impression, she had taken a personal day off from work. She cleaned her apartment, had her hair done, got a manicure, and when she got home, she put on her makeup, put her best dress on, and was ready 20 minutes before the time her date said he would arrive to pick her up. His expected arrival came and went, but she continued to wait patiently. Finally, after waiting over an hour, she decided she had been stood up. So she took off her dress, put on her jammies, gathered her favorite junk food, and sat in front of the television with her dog. Some time later, there was a knock at the door. It was her date. Her look was surprised, but he was more surprised to see her in her jammies. I gave you an extra two hours, he said, and you're still not ready? Oh. Are we waiting patiently for Jesus to return? Have we, we have to keep waiting and be ready. Third, we live at peace with God when we repent of our sin daily, hourly, minute by minute. God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Regular repentance makes us ready for Christ's return. This Advent, let's practice repenting of our sin. That means telling God but not just that. Telling God what we've done wrong and choosing not to do it again. Then we will be ready when Christ returns and we will live at peace with God. Canadian-born astrophysicist and former CEO of a website called Reasons to Believe, Hugh Ross, gave a lecture on the evidences of God in science. After the presentation, four physics professors approached Ross. Ross asked them if any of them could deny any of what he had presented. They said they could not. Then Ross asked, why are you not ready to accept the conclusions. One said he was not ready to be that rational because he did not want to give up his lifestyle. The others said they were not ready because of the deep wounds they had received in their lives at the hands of people who called themselves Christians. Those were excuses. But God will not accept those excuses. We have a responsibility as Christians to live in a way that does not turn off people out in the world. 
this Advent season, let's make the effort to repent of some sin in our lives, and then we will live at peace with God. Are we ready for the day of the Lord? Peter said, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. Rather than a literal description of the events of that day, Peter attempt, attempted to describe the indescribable. He wanted the temporary nature of our physical world to make a difference in the eternal values and priorities of the early Christians and of us as well. Fourth, we live at peace with God when we live holy, godly lives. I didn't say perfect lives. No one, not one of us, but Jesus is perfect. But we can live better lives, more faithful lives. Let's strive to live in Christ. Remember, when we live in Christ, if we imagine this Bible is Jesus, and this piece of paper is any one of us or all of us, when we are in Christ, God sees Jesus, not our sin, especially when we confess it. So let's live in Christ. Let us live filled with the Holy Spirit, bearing the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, which is God's control. Related to God's promise of Jesus' return, Peter said, we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. As a result, we should live lives of holiness, ready for Christ's return, watchful and alert, separated from sin and turned toward Almighty God. Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour, not the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The fact that God delayed Jesus' return for more than 2,000 years does not mean that Jesus will not return or that God is indifferent. God has delayed bringing about the day of the Lord because God is patient, waiting and wanting as many as possible to come to repentance, to live in the light of Christ. We must be ready and live at peace with God, for then we will be ready this Advent season, let's make the effort to replace a bad habit with a godly, good habit. Then we will live at peace with God. Oxford professor and author C.S. Lewis said, a Christian is not the one who never goes wrong, but one who is enabled to repent and begin over again after each stumble. Why? Because of the inner workings of Christ within. This Advent season, let's begin again after each stumble.
for then we will live at peace with God. Amen. Through the prophet Isaiah, God said, Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. As we continue in a spirit of worship, let us offer ourselves and our financial gifts to God. The usher will receive the morning offering. Responsive and responsible. 
increase the cooperation and collaboration between President Biden, Vice President Harris, all 100 senators, 435 representatives, 50 governors, five U.S. territorial governors, and every judge. Protect the men and women serving this country here, overseas, and at our borders. Touch the hearts and minds of every educator to recognize their responsibilities in formulating analytical thinkers. God of peace, pour out your peace on all our neighbors near and far, those in need, who struggle every day. To the hungry, the homeless, the jobless, and employers seeking employees, give opportunities and new provision. Inspire us all in this season of giving to assist those who daily need care and for those who daily care for the needy. To the abused, exploited, and trafficked, give hope for a better future. To all who suffer during this holiday season, give your peace and calm. God of peace, Pour out your peace on your church. Help us to anticipate Christ's return in faithfulness and hopeful expectation. During this Advent season, may your church around the globe repent of all sin and turn back to the saving grace of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. May all who call Grace Church their spiritual home renew their strength and their commitment to grace. God of peace, pour out your peace on our extended family of faith. May our young couples, individuals, and families do their best to prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. May our couples and those they love know when Christ returns, the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all humanity together will see it. May each one gathered here and those unable to be among us know the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Karen, Anthony, Matthew, Dave, O'Kee, Kathy, Joe, Scott, Brianna, their children, Gail, Carla, Anna, Betsy, Gary, Nicholas, Todd, Matthew, O'Keefe's grandchildren, Josiah, Lydia, Dominic, Gary N, Sandy J, Muriel, Babs, Chris F, Cliff, Penny, Emma G, Julius, Caroline, Tina, Anthony, a regent, May those we know and care about who are struggling or just trying to move forward know our God tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. We lift before you Susan W., who went to the hospital with chest pains this morning. Be with her. Surround her with your protecting angels. Betsy's neighbor, Debbie, who had an accident. Her daughter, Betsy, and granddaughter, Portia, and great-grandson, Upton Michael. Anna's friend, Stacy. David T's 15-year-old great-nephew, Zach. Gary's friend, Pat T, having tests. The people in Vermont and Hawaii affected by natural disasters. The people in Maine and Tampa and everywhere that are impacted by mass killings. Joanne's daughter, Andrea, and fiance, Adam, and Thomas, Christy, and grandchildren, Lucas, Oliver, and Eve, nephews, Michael, and Sean, sister, Diane, friend, Ray, G, and wife, Gloria, Joe and Gail's daughter, Inger, Jeff and Luella, and their family, DJ and Megan, and granddaughter, Caitlin. Karen R. Lord, she's been in the hospital again because of the accident and 
we ask you to surround her with your protecting angels so that the accident will not cause further damage to her legs. We remember her friends, Faith and Dale, Victor and Lillian, sons Joel, Scott, and Neil, Karen Kay's friends, Linda M and Fran A, her daughter Kate, son James, and Christy and grandson Henry, Muriel's friend Eileen, grandchildren Katie and Ryan, daughter Jill, and son Bob dealing with colon cancer, and wife Kim. Our missionaries, Adam and Janelle L, and their children, Jonathan, Thomas, and Elizabeth. May those enduring life-threatening illnesses or grieving the loss of loved ones remember they ought to live holy and godly lives as they look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. May they bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Salvation for Robert Bird Lyndon. Thank you for his life, Lord. For the ways he worked with young people to bring about transformed lives. For his musical abilities and all of his community service. Be with the Brooks, Taylor, Lyndon families, Lord, that they might not grieve without as those who have no hope do. Remember the whole Jensen, Swanson, and Nelson families on John's passing. Todd's friend, Jeff Scott's friends and family after his accident and death. Gary and Kathy's niece, Michelle, diagnosed with breast cancer. Dave T's friend, Norma, on his best friend, Bob's passing. Matthew F's friend, Ella whose mom has breast cancer. Gary N's sister and niece and at his great niece's passing. And the Arborio, Barboni, Trudell, Frenzy's families, especially Nicholas, Anthony, and Matthew on mom Patty's death. The Soderbergh, Norris families on Walter's passing in October and Mike D's passing in January. And his friends, Kristen and Christine, and Joanne's friend, Linda, and friend Valentina's sister, Vosava, not doing well for her treatment for brain cancer. Thank you that our daughter-in-law, Gina, her last brain cancer MRI was silent with no tumor growth. We lift before you, Lord, the silent prayers we hold in our hearts. Hear our prayers. thank you that you hear our prayers, for we have prayed them in the name of our coming Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of response. It came upon the midnight clear, number 251. Let us stand if you're able.
go from this place, comforted by the parental mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, calmed by the Prince of Peace, God the Son, our Lord and Savior, and carried forward by the powerful presence of God the Holy Spirit, our guardian and guide. Let us go forth to love and serve God as we love and serve one another. Amen. Thank you.